we will now extend this principle to the spatial domain. So we will use the exactly same approach as in the time domain. We uh, need a spatial covariance estimator. And the principle is the same. We will construct this estimator by doing some averaging of um, spatial covariances, meaning cross products uh, for the observations and the residuals at two different locations. But we will impose some structure to avoid the problem, the incidental parameter problem, and enforce a zero covariance beyond a particular uh, distance cutoff. So in general, we can write this just as before, where we actually have a, an average of all the sample cross products that pertain to locations i and j that are within a given distance band from each other. And the cross product that we construct cons consists of two parts. One part pertains to the residuals, the cross product of the residuals. The other part pertains to the cross product of the explanatory variables. Now, the problem with this approach is, as we've seen before, that this does not necessarily guarantee that the resulting estimate of the variance covariance matrix is positive definite. So that is a potential problem. And as we saw in the time series case, the solution to this is to apply some kind of weighting to these um, cross products. So we make a sample average only up to a given distance, and then we put in a distance decay process where we weigh um, the cross products that are closer together heavier than the ones that are further apart. The first implementation of this was in a special situation where the observations were on a grid, and it's a paper by Conley in the Journal of Econometrics. And the reason, um, well, the, the advantage of using a grid, an M by N grid, is that we can use a very straightforward um, analog of the Bartlett weights. So we um, extend the Bartlett weights to two dimensions, where we have a, a decay in the north-south direction and a decay in the east-west direction, so to speak. And then we pick these weights to make sure that the variance covariance is positive definite. The resulting spatial covariance estimator is this very complicated quadruple sum, but it's actually not that complicated. Basically, the K term is the Bartlett weights. So the Bartlett weights ensure that the cross products are uh, down-weighted as they are further apart. And secondly, there is a cutoff uh, beyond a particular distance. Everything else is the same as before. These are cross products of locations uh, of both residuals and variable observations that are for pairs of locations that are a given distance from each other on the, on the grid. So the idea is the same as before. We have this variance estimate, and then we plug that in to, we keep the OLS, but the OLS now has a robust, so to speak, uh, variance, covariance estimate. Um, the, in around 2006, Collegian and Prucha generalized this approach and uh, in, in two respects. Uh, one is that um, they went beyond the, the, the OLS setup and took a very generalized setup where we have spatial lags, potentially endogenous variables, and everything else, which requires the use of instruments um, in kind of a two-stage least squares type of approach, but it's, it's a weighted two-stage least squares approach. So the variance covariance matrix in that setup has the a similar structure, but now the cross products pertain to the matrix of instruments H. In the standard regression case, H is simply X. So the problem is exactly the same. The approach uh, is also similar, but the second generalization is that rather than do, using a regular grid, and these Bartlett window type weights, 
uh, Collegian and Prucha introduced the use of a kernel function. So the kernel function uh, accomplishes two things. Uh, one, there is a bandwidth, and beyond the bandwidth, there's no covariance. So that's our distance cutoff, uh, so to speak. And secondly, the kernel weights themselves are built in a distance decay. And there are a large number of kernel functions. Just for illustration purposes, I list them here. Uh, they're uniform weights, where, of course, there isn't much of a distance decay, so that's not that uniform, use, useful. But the triangular ones are an extension of the Bartlett weights. Quadratic give uh, a more rapid distance decay, and so on. And then the Gaussian ones, they are also used quite often, but they don't actually have a strict bandwidth in the sense of uh, the kernel weights being zero beyond a particular distance. For the Gaussian weights, uh, and we've already encountered those in the point pattern analysis as well, the um, bandwidth is a function of the uh, variance or the standard deviation of the Gaussian distribution. Okay, with the kernel in hand, then the estimation of the spatial hack uh, case is, uh, again, it should look very familiar by now. It is an average, 1 over n. We have a double sum over i and j. We have the cross products of the h, i, and the h, j. These are the instrument vectors. And then the cross product of the corresponding residuals, e, i, and e, j. So that is all the same. The new element is this k, which is the kernel value, the value of the kernel function for the um, using the distance that i and j are apart and using the bandwidth delta. So um, this kernel function ensures that um, there is no spatial covariance beyond this given distance and also imposes the distance to k weights. Then as a special case, we have the variance term also in there, which is the same as before. So then the covariance matrix gets plugged in um, in the middle of this very complicated expression. But just uh, to help you in the classic case, this um, matrix in the middle um, is h prime h. So then the h prime h's all cancel out and you end up with the h prime h inverse in the middle, which is the standard two-stage least squares result. But here, this is generalized, and we have this hack covariance matrix in the middle. Again, nothing changes to the um, estimates. The only thing that changes is the standard errors. Now, this, this hack approach was developed for a very general case with <clears throat> endogenous variables and spatial lags and so on. But it can, uh, it, it's very simple to apply it to the ordinarily squares case. The h's are replaced by x, and so that's straightforward. Also, it is an alternative way to, it's an alternative to the combo model. It's an alternative to the estimation of the SAR-SAR model to allow remaining spatial autocorrelation in a spatial lag model. So the way we approach this is that we estimate the spatial lag model by spatial two-stage least squares, as we did before, and then we use the residuals from that regression to construct a hack estimator for the variance. And so what this does is that it adjusts the standard errors of the estimates of the spatial lag model, but it keeps the original estimates from the spatial two-stage least squares. And it can do that because it does not specify a parametric form for the spatial autocorrelation. So this is some type of semi-parametric approach. And this is the final slide dealing with estimation of spatial regression models.